I'm going to go ahead and wrap this sucker up with cycle 13B, uh, which is all about deployment there. Now, in my case, I'm not going to be doing a mobile build, so I'm just going to disable some of those mobile specific elements there. Uh, I could, though, but just, you know, whatever, just so my build will be similar to what we've been seeing so far. And I'll unmute audio. And so in order to do a build, I'm going to go up to File and then Build Settings. And I'm going to see a few things here. So first off are the platforms uh, that we could build to. And right now you can see I'm building for PC, Mac, and Linux. That's your default. Let's say I wanted to do iOS or Android, though. I could click on those, and you'll notice on, on this particular machine anyway, uh, I don't actually have the Android module installed uh, or the iOS module installed. Uh, I would need the iOS module installed on PC anyway because, you know, you can't install iOS or build iOS without a, a Mac and Xcode. Uh, but let's say if I wanted Android, and this is kind of a, also a good maybe learning opportunity, uh, if I wanted to install the Android module, uh, now, I installed this version of Unity, 2018.2.9, using the Unity Hub. And so I could, you know, locate that version in the Unity Hub, which is right here. And because I use the Hub, I don't need to go find the installer or anything anymore. I can just click uh, the dot, 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 and click Add Component, and just say, you know, give me Android, and click Done, and it'll download and install that component, and I can add and remove components from there, which is super convenient. Uh, you would, you would think it was so convenient I would have done it before recording the video, but uh, I forgot. At any rate, I'm not actually going to do an Android build anyway because, uh, you know, you won't see it. It'll be on my phone. It'll be much better to do a build for my PC where you'll actually see it on my computer here. The other thing to be aware of when doing building uh, is... At this point, all the steps on the Unity side are, are done, and we're ready to do sort of any, any build, mobile build we want to do. However, building for things like iOS and Android require an extra step that exists outside of Unity. So if you want to build for iOS, you need to download Xcode, you need to set yourself up as a developer through Apple's developer portal, and you need to get a, a provisioning profile on your device. And then when you build to iOS, it will actually create an Xcode project that you will then open in Xcode and at that point do the actual uh, iOS build. So that's, that's out of Unity's hands there. For Android, you can do all the building from within Unity, but you do need to have the Android uh, SDK or what they call the ADK, the Android Development Kit, downloaded and installed. And when you do that, Unity will automatically recognize it, and then when you hit build, it'll, it'll build an APK for you and, and be able to push it out to uh, your device. If you're curious, uh, maybe it's not working, but you do have the ADK installed. For, for Android anyway, iOS it should work automatically, but for Android, um, you can always go to Edit and then Preferences uh, or Unity Preferences if you're on a Mac and look for External Tools uh, and see... Oh, right, well, it's my mistake. I would say you'll see uh, the ADK path and the uh, JDK path, the Java Development Kit, but since I don't have the Android module installed, you don't see that here, so my mistake. Okay, well, I've decided that saying, whoops, my mistake wasn't good enough, I went and installed the module. So uh, here we are, if you see the scene, it changed a little bit or whatever, that's what I did. So now if I click on Android, you'll see all of the, the Android bits that I can work with here. And again, if I want to make sure Unity knows where my Android SDK or ADK, as they call it, I can go to Edit Preferences or Unity Preferences, click on External Tools, and there are the paths for the, the ADK or the Android SDK uh, and uh, the Java SDK, which will also install when you install those tools. So um, <laughs> anyway, at this point, now I could do an Android build if I want, but again, you won't be able to see that, so I'm going to stick to a PC, Mac, and Linux build. Whichever I'm doing, if I'm doing Android or PC Mac or, or iOS or whatever, uh, I need to tell it what scenes I want in my build. Now, if I were to, say, build this right now, it would work, and it would show me this scene here, and I'd get that. But most games have more than one scene, and I don't want it just to, to put into the build whichever scene I happen to have open at any given time. And so I have a couple things I could do. I could click Add Open Scenes that would add them here, or if I want to be uh, specific, I could go to my Scenes folder. In this case, I'm working in this scene I called Resumed Training Day, so I'll just click and drag it in there, and if I had more, you know, I could put them in there and they'll get an index and they'll be part of my build, uh, or I can remove them or reorder them or whatever I want to do. Whichever is index zero would be the scene that, that loads to start with, no matter what. Uh, and so if I have like a bootloader scene or whatever, that would be my, or bootstrapper scene, that would be my, my, my index zero more than likely. And so there we go. So now I have this in my build and all that's really left to do is to build it. And so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I don't need this to be a development build or whatever. Um, so I can turn those off and I could choose, uh, now I don't have 
Mac or Linux installed uh, as a platform on here, but if I did, I'd be able to build those even from Windows and different architectures and whatever. But I'm gonna click build and run. It's gonna say, okay, well, where do you wanna build this? I have a builds folder, so I'll just drop it right on in there. You can see I have an older one already in that folder, so it'll just automatically override that. And so it's gonna you know, compile our shaders and turn this whole thing into a game for us. Now, through the, uh, the, the magic of video, I'm gonna pause this here, and then we're gonna see the result. Okay, so that took uh, a few more seconds there, about 30 seconds all said and done, and it popped up here. And so we have this sort of image here, and I'll show you where that comes from in a moment. So we have this sort of background image here, and I uh, could run this full screen, but I'm actually not gonna run this full screen because I didn't add any uh, commands to actually exit the game, which I probably should have, an escape key to, to leave the game or whatever. Uh, so let's just run this at some smaller setting. You know what, whatever, let's run it full screen. Let's just see it. Uh, full screen there. Uh, and for my monitor, that's a little bit bigger. Let's do 1920 by 1080. And uh, we'll just go ahead and hit play. And so we go. So we get this cool sort of screen with this background there. And our scene fades in. And we have a build of our game running. And there we go. And then we die. And then that was that whole thing. And there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit that out. So to show you some of the things and, and where they came from there, if I go to my player settings, uh, first things first, uh, you can see I have uh, where the company name is set up, the actual project name, that'll be what the build was. And then we have some icon here, so we'll see if we actually look at the build, it's gonna have that icon, which is pretty cool. So let me go to those builds there, so we can see that. And there we go, there's our, our build robbyplatformer.exe right there. And there's an APK, I obviously have built this in the past for mobile. Uh, and so then we have, we could set up a default cursor, maybe his face is the cursor or whatever. And then we have some variable sizes depending on the resolutions and whatnot. Uh, under, uh, no, we didn't want to change these. Under splash image, there's that uh, image that appeared in the, um, the configuration dialog that popped up by default, that background image. But then I also have this uh, logo set up here. So this Pixel Rain logo with uh, a background image. And that's what we saw as sort of the splash screen uh, popped up that made with Unity splash screen there. And then other, other settings. One other thing that's important, especially when we're dealing with um, mobile development, uh, is we'll need to send up a bundle identifier. Otherwise, we won't be able to build. Now, for here, it says Mac, but we'll want the same for, say, Android there. What's our Android package name? Where I've set this to be comunityrobby 2 d platformer. If you don't give that a custom name there, uh, builds will fail as it's going to say, oh, this is you know for mobile or this is for Android or whatever, so you need to have those things. Okay. So at that point, our build is complete, our game is done. Let's take a look at one last thing, and that's this sort of extended version. The extended version was created as part of training day, so if you filled out the, uh, the survey, you got access to the extended version, but now it's just built in with the assets, so um, you could just download those with the project. And what the extended scene is gonna do, the extended scene is going to add to, for us uh, some new traps. So we got uh, two new traps here. Uh, we're gonna have a, these auto spikes, and falling blocks. And I think we may have tweaked also uh, some light placement. Oh yeah, so we've added light shaft, as we can see here, and some of these foreground shadows as well. Just again, add some, some ambiance to this game. So if I hit play here, we'll see the, we the swinging ax. Oh, wow. Well, I had said before, I believe that I'm not very good at this game. And I, I hold to that. Those are swinging axe. Uh, somewhere over here we've got these uh, auto spikes. Yep, so we get too close, they pop up. If you walk away, they'll go back down. There we go. And we got some grass and stuff here. And then finally, down here, let's see if I can even still beat this game, I don't know. We have these uh, hard blocks. There we go. But then, become part of the ground there. So that's part of the extended version. Just some, some extra way of looking at these, some, some additional code that just shows you how you can create more of your own traps and whatever uh, to see how you can build a game like this and make it more and more robust. So anyway, that's going to wrap up the training day. Sorry we didn't wrap up with the original footage, but uh, it all kind of falls in line with this as well anyway. Plus, you got to see that, hey, it updates to 2018.2 without any problems. Thank you all for, for paying attention. Thank you all for participating, uh, giving feedback, and, and actually, you know, 
following along and, and building this really cool game. And, and thanks again to the great studio Pixel Rain, who, who is building or has built Robbie Swift Hand and the Orb of Mysteries. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for everyone involved. Thanks for me too. And Andy Touch and uh, Michael Warburton, uh, who were on stage uh, presenting. I hope everyone has a great day and enjoy creating awesome stuff.